Welcome to tutorial number 320, Output Control Report Formatting. So, so far we've already started this series. Um, the Output Control section is all about how do you write output from GHS and how do you control that output, the formatting of it, which is what we're going to cover today. So, we're going to talk about reports and boxes, uh, that's a type of formatting, the note command, the subtitle command, and the page command. And these four commands in combination will give you a large amount of control over the formatting of your reports and allow you to do 95% of everything that you need to do. But first a quick disclaimer, uh, this presentation is for instruction only. It is not to be used in engineering for construction. And I'm not a representative of Create Creative Systems. They're the makers of GHS. Uh, this is unofficial training only, me merely meant for your help. Uh, if you actually are interested in the official training, you can contact Creative Systems on the information on your screen. I highly recommend the official training. It provides quite a bit of detail, and you get to talk to some pretty astounding industry experts. Okay, so let's get into some details. Uh, first off, report boxes. Mm. Now, what do I mean by a box? Now, the box is a specific command that's used to format a report. And when you have the box on, uh, your reports look like this. So, if you see this black and white text here up at the top left corner, uh, this is your typical formatting from GHS. It's just straight text output uh, that's spaced nicely, but it, you know, it looks like something that came out of a 1980s computer program, which is also when GHS was being built, so it was very appropriate for the 1980s. Now, GHS also has some new modern features, uh, and this is the box format for a report. So you can see we've got uh, color designation in each of the columns. Uh, we've got some nicer border formatting. And it's uh, generally what most people would regard as a clearer to read format. Now, it is a matter of opinion. Some people like it the more traditional way. And that's why the box is an option. You can turn it on or off. Uh, where you specify it is when you're um, first starting your report. So it's one of the options that you specify when you're typing in your report file name. Uh, you can also specify if you want to include the color. So you know, this is obviously a full color box. You can also do it as just a black and white box. So if you were to turn on a color box, it would be report. Uh, you'd put your file name in here. And then forward slash box colon color. If you just want black and white, it's forward slash box colon black bw. Okay, so let's get on to the note command. Uh, the box command is, like I said, really a, ma a matter of personal preference. Some people like it, some people don't. The note command, on the other hand, is something pretty centralized to report output. Uh, what this does is it gives you the option to customize and write your own outputs. See, all of the other commands in GHS, when you're reporting hydrostatics, showing the status of your ship, um, running stability curves, all of those commands have something built in to tell them how to write output to a report, how to get the spacing of all the text right, you know, which text to put in bold or italics and all of that. But sometimes you might have something that you want a specific type of output that none of the commands produces. That is what the note command does. Is the note command gives you direct control over exactly what's being written to your report log file and exactly how it's formatted. So it will send text directly to the screen and to the report output. Now, the uh, full command for it in GHS is note, N-O-T-E, but nobody uses that. Uh, there's a shorthand version of this command, which is just the backslash. So if you see um, in somebody's run file a uh, text entry that looks like this with the backslash and then this is example text or any text after it, uh, that's a note command. So whatever is following the backslash is going to be written straight to the report. 
Now here's where the real power of the note command comes in, is exactly how you set up the symbols before and after the note command controls the formatting of the text that you are sending out. So one of the tricks is you can center the text. Um, this where you just have the backslash at the beginning, uh, all the text will be left justified. It'll all be aligned from the left. But you could also center it. Now that's useful if you want to write out a header or some sort of title. So the way you do that is you've got your backslash to start the note command, whatever text you want, and then you finish with a trailing backslash. And the note command will understand that. It will cut off this trailing backslash. So this, this part will not be printed, and it will center your text. OK, uh, let's say also you wanted to change the text color. We live in the modern age. Computers can do color. Uh, you can do this with the note command. So you can enclose in brackets and put the color number before the text. And it will keep that color until you change it again. So well, there's a couple things to see there. Number one, how do you do that? So here's the example. We've got our backslash to start our note command in brackets. And then we have the number two. Now, if you look over here at the color table, uh, this is a table you can get out of the GHS reference manual. Uh, the number two will create a blue colored text. So we've got two in brackets and then whatever the uh, text is. And just to confuse things, I'm saying this is green text. Uh, now, that's a great example there, though, of something that's wrong. Because, see, this changes the text color to blue. Now, if I had another command under this, you know, backslash saying this is red text, or something like that, it will still print out blue text until you give another formatting command like this to change the text color. Okay. Now, sometimes also, maybe you want to create a whole table, or you want to print some sort of special variables that are going to include um, some numbers that actually change with your ship, with your calculations. You know, so you don't know the answer beforehand, and you actually want GHS to print it out. That's the answer you're trying to find. Uh, you can tell GHS to include those variables in your note command. And so the way you do that is you enclose the variable name in brackets. So for example, draft, uh, that's actually the name of a variable that GHS has built into it. Uh, specifically to the uh, draft of the ship. And it's enclosed in brackets. So if you put that in a note command, you know, if I put a backslash in front of this, I'm not going to get draft the word printed out. I'm going to get the current value of the draft of the ship as a number printed out. And that's where you get some pretty powerful um, options there. Because you can take that along with your normal note commands, and you can combine all of this to create your own tables. Um, so you can now start creating your own formatting, your spacing, and you know it's not automatic spacing. You have to be very careful about the placement of your output. Uh, you have to manually space each of your entries. But you can make it work. Pardon me. Now, most of your numbers, you're going to want them to be right justified. Uh, most computer outputs, we line up the numbers against the uh, right side of each column. Uh, in GHS, there's a way to do that with the note command, and that's by putting a space after each bracket. So you see here in this example, we have the bracket, a space, and then the variable name. And that's how GHS is going to know to right justify that. So everything will line up from this point right here, uh, from this character going down. Uh, you can also use a colon to specify the precision of the variable. You know, how many numbers do you want it to print it out by? You know, is this going to be three decimal points, two decimal points? And in this case, I've got you know, depth, colon, two, for two decimal points. And so this shows you an example of how you can combine the whole thing together. So I have backslash for note command. This forward, this first line here, that's just the uh, the header of my table. 
to let anybody else know what the numbers represent. But then from here on out, uh, that is a row of numbers only. So you can see, pardon me, we are writing out the depth of the ship, the trim of the ship, the heel, and the length of the waterline. And all of those are built-in um, GHS variables that you can pull the values from. But I do want to point out, there's nothing that carefully aligned any of these variables. You, you have to actually put in the spaces yourself to get it all to line up carefully. So that's a little crude of a method of formatting your table, but if you're careful, it works. Okay, that was the note command. There's a lot to know about note. There's a lot of power in it. Now let's move on to something completely different. New command. The subtitle command. So normally the title of a GHS model is just the name of the ship. But we might want to give some information about the type of analysis that we're doing. You know, are we doing an intact analysis or a damaged analysis? And that's something that we might want to have printed on the top of every single page in our analysis output. Enter the subtitle command. Uh, it repeats the note command at the top of each page. And so the way it works is you've got your note commands here but you start with the subtitle command. So the command is actually subtitle, and then everything that follows that, um, you know, as long as you don't put a break between lines, all of the following lines will all be included in the subtitle. So these will be printed at the top of every single page. And I'm not sure how many lines you can do. You can do at least four. Uh, we've successfully used four lines for the subtitle with no problems. Now remember you can also um, include variables in your node outputs so you can start doing things like writing which loading condition number you're on, uh, what your draft is, all of that can be written into the subtitle command. And then you put a break here so that's a full carriage return and write out any normal GHS commands afterwards and that, that's how it, GHS knows where the subtitle stops. And it will carry on from there. And so that subtitle will be print on, print on every single page. Uh, you can also update the subtitle command. So say you want to change the subtitle midway through your uh, report, just reissue the subtitle command with the uh, new information that you want to be in your subtitle. <clears throat> okay, next, the page command. This one's actually really nice and simple. Uh, so when you're writing a report, you don't actually have to worry about the page breaks or anything like that. Uh, GHS automatically puts page breaks wherever they're needed, and that's to fit to normal page sizes. Uh, but you can also put in your own manual page breaks, and the GHS command for that is page, just P-A-G-E. That, that's all it does. Adds in a page break. Okay, time to practice all of this. So for homework number 321, what I would like you to do is create a report uh, with the boxes in color. So that's the fancy formatting. I want you to add in a subtitle to the report. You're going to create a simple table with the following columns printed out in the, col in the table. Column number one is just the number one. Um, that, that's all I want you to print out in that one. This table is a fairly artificial. I'm, I'm making up information for you to put in it, but it's not so much important what the information is. It's important w how you format it to make it look nicely, make it look nice. So make sure all the columns line up. Um, make sure you include headers in your table. That's one of the important things. You know, Label each of your columns. And column number one is just going to be number one. And then column number two is going to be the vessel draft. Now you don't know what that is, so you have to use one of the GHS built-in commands, uh, that or GHS built-in variables, excuse me. That variable is depth. Um, and then column number three is the vessel weight. Same case there, you have to use a built-in variable, uh, which is weight. And then for column number four, just write out your name. 
So every single time you write out a uh, row here, your name should be in the last column. And of course, we have provided an example solution to this. OK, well, thank you very much. Uh, this is giving you quite a bit of information for how to control outputs for form and formatting for reports. With this, you can make some very professional looking reports. And the really nice part is you can automate all of this into a GHS run file and you only have to do it once. And then from there, out, there on out, your reports always look professional. You can view this video, several other videos, and you can find the homework files on dmsonline.us. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. Hey, did you know that there is a magic button down below? Click the like button or even the subscribe button and I will make more videos for you.